For 29 years, nine ball players from around the globe have made their way to the beautiful city of Chesapeake, Virginia, all with the dream of becoming U.S. Open nine ball champions. The list of former champions reads like a who's who in professional pool. Who will it be this year? Brought to you by Chalk Off, the official table cleaner of professional pool. The Spider, using laser technology to improve your game. And Q-Tech Cues, serious cues for serious players. You're watching the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship on Billiard Club Network. Hello everyone and welcome to Chesapeake, Virginia for the 2004 U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. It's the 29th inception of this event. It's a historic one. And what a feature match we have for you here on day one. The earthquake, Keith McCready, finishing third in this event last year, up against a very tough opponent in his opening match, Ryan McCreesh from Maryland. And, uh, Billy, can you give us any insight as to uh, how this one's going to unfold? Well, your guess is as good as mine, Jim. Uh, all I know is... Uh McCreesh and McCready sound like a marriage, you know, but uh, I hope they'll end up in divorce court before this match is over. Anyways, McCreesh, I t I'm being told, is a great player from Maryland. I haven't seen him play, but my sources tell me he's a talent to be reckoned with. And, uh, but can he, can he handle the pressures here of the U.S. Open? That is going to be tough. Well, Billy, I never question your sources, so uh, I know that the players are chomping at the bit, ready to get going here, so let's pass the baton right over to our tournament director and MC, Scott the Shot Smith. Uh, this is the 29th edition of the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. This is day number one, our feature matchup for this time frame on table number eight uh, from Frederick, Maryland. He's player representative for Frederick Hughes, currently ranked number one on the Planet Pool Tour. One of the young guns on tour, he's known as the Genie. Please welcome from Frederick, Maryland, Mr. Ryan McCreesh. Give it up to him. Thank you. And his opponent is a columnist for Inside Pool Magazine, former winner of the BC Open, third place in last year's U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. You saw him in the movie The Color of Money. Now you can see him live on BilliardClub.net. Please welcome from Los Angeles, California, the earthquake, Mr. Keith McCready. Thank you. Good luck, gentlemen. May like for the first break. Let's get it on. Get the chalk off with the new and improved pool table cleaner. Just spray it out over the table and wipe it clean with the handy microfiber wiper and your pool table is cleaner than new. Get the chalk off with this professional pool table cleaner. You get free shipping when you call us toll free 866-774-8770 or visit us online at PoolTableCleaner.com. Get the chalk off today. Hi, I'm Alan Hopkins, like Jeanette Lee and other professionals, I've been playing pool most of my life. That's right, Alan. Naturally, our games got better over time. We spent many hours practicing the key concepts needed to pocket billiard balls. But today, there was a great new way for players to improve their game. It's called the Spider. Order yours today and your game will improve dramatically. Call toll free or go online and order yours today. Rack them up. Watch all the action online at BilliardClub.net to see Pro Pool's biggest events of the year, including the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship. Watch all the feature matches in their entirety on your computer. See every single shot from start to finish with the latest and greatest in streaming video technology online only at BilliardClub.net. Log on today and experience Pro Pool like never before with your front row seat at BilliardClub.net. noticeable and worth mentioning too is they're putting the nine ball on the spot here for this year's open and players uh, players are, are gonna, it's gonna take a bit of getting used to but i think the soft break a lot of them have been experimenting with that on the outside tables i wonder if that's going to be employed here uh, i'm kind of curious to find out whether or not they're going to be breaking softly or not as well uh, in the past the soft break was fairly effective but keep in mind the big power breakers still get good production off of their breaks if they choose to break with power. Yeah, power and control. That's the name of the game. Well, Keith McCready, as we said, opening the program, finishing third last year, and he's going to be looking to go just a few notches higher on that totem pole. 
And like I mentioned before, McCree, this is the first time he's ever been in this type of a situation. This is his first major tournament, and the U.S. Open is an awfully tough tournament to start with. Well, pressure makes diamonds. Not only is he starting playing in the U.S. Open, but he's going to be on television. You know, well, uh, this is very, very difficult. And he's having a real good look at that rack. Just checking it to make sure. It's a race to 11, day one here. You know a lot of butterflies are going around his stomach right now. Let's see how he breaks the balls. I really don't know much about him, like I mentioned. All that nervous energy into the break. Excellent break. Look at the control of the cue ball, Jim, positioned nicely in the center of the table. Ideally, in, 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 if he would have pocketed a ball. That was the good news, Billy. Yeah. The bad news is he didn't make a ball. And the first look in goes to McCready. And this is all about establishing yourself, settling those nerves that you know have to be there. And this isn't an easy prospect early. A difficult two. Not only is it too difficult, but he's got to hit it with a nice soft speed to go. Or he often hit it three cushions. Now the three ball is positioned right here. Oh, that's a great shot from McCready. That'll go a long ways to settling his nerves. But as he landed on the pink four, he may have just nudged that five and left himself hooked behind right. the seven. And I do believe he is behind the seven. He's going to have, probably have to go to the cushion behind the four and hopes to stick the cue ball somewhere in that area. Perfectly struck ball, Jim. There's the position of the cue ball and the pink four. And at this level, Billy, I think it's fair to say escaping the hook's not always the problem. Getting the safety, that's another story. Yeah, he couldn't have asked for anything better than what he got there. Great results, great shot. Now McCree steps to the table. He looks like he's going to get his jump cue out here, Jim. Notice the position of the nine in relation right here to the four ball. There's the nine, and there's the four ball. Quite possibly he can make this combination four into the nine into this pocket here. Well, that has Not an easy shot, but if he hits it well. That has to be the chance. reason he's got his jump cue out. He can also pocket the four in the lower right-hand corner off the nine. Look at the Look nine. At the nine. He got out. There you got go. A little bit of a lucky kiss there, Jim, but nevertheless, <laughs> game number one goes in the three. One nil, Ryan McCreesh, and he'll be breaking in rack number two over Keith McCready. Well, that was a terrific opening rack for McCreesh, and Billy, as you said, every opportunity to make the nine... And it unfolded as well as it could have for McCree. And it was really important for McCree to get out to the early lead in this match because he's the person that really hasn't been, he's not the experienced player out there, obviously. You know, and this is all new out, out there for him. The pressures of the U.S. Open on television, playing McCree, who was a very vocal player. You know, it was important for McCree to get the early lead, and that's what he's done. Keith would have felt a little more confident coming into this match. He spent a lot of time here on center stage last year. And this is not the sort of start he was looking for. And McCreesh is going to be looking to extend that lead. Watch the cue ball off the break. You know, he didn't strike the balls as well that time as he did last time, but he was much more productive. Pocketing two balls on the break, Jim. And he's come up with a with some type of a shot on the two. This is the two ball here. He can cut it into the corner, setting the cue ball somewhere in this area here. He may go into the orange five, but uh, you know, he really really doesn't have much much more he offered to him other than cutting it into the corner. He can play a safety on the shot as well. Let's see what he chooses to do. He played a safety all the way, Jim. Very intelligent shot when you consider the position of the two in, in relation to the cue ball. I myself would have played a safety, but of course, I'm a safety player. Not much offense left in my game. No. Long, difficult, too, certainly. You'd have to expect McCready to be ducking here as well. Yeah, I, I kind of like, like McCready to, to bank the two ball in this direction over here. Well, he, he went for the pocket. 
You know, once again, very aggressive player. You know, that time it worked out well for him. You know, kind of a fortuitous roll with the two ball behind the black eight. <laughs> and I'm certainly sure he's glad that shot's over in the position he's left with Christian is a pretty difficult one. And he seems quite content with that effort. Just doing a little tip maintenance there. Is the earthquake? Now, McCreesh will hit the, hit the cushion right here with a little low ball, which will curve into the two ball. So, therefore, he figures to get some fairly good action. Oh, he's hitting high on the rail. Well, it didn't work out well for him. Now, McCree, with his first legitimate opportunity, I'm kind of anxious to see and curious to see how well he responds. Well, he did have the first opportunity in the opening rack. So he really can't afford to let this one go awry. Fortunately, the pink four is right down at the same side of the table that the red three is on. So therefore, he really doesn't have to do much traveling with the cue ball. He's going to stay focused here. Very, very important shot coming up. Nicely struck. One guarantee, too, when you're watching McCready is you're very apt to get some commentary, self-inflicted as well as don't blink you're apt to miss a few shots now this should be the last semi-difficult shot he'll have in this rack he's put it down nicely the eight and nine rather routine jim both players know each other's games well they've met in some of the smaller tour events as a matter of fact the last time they played didn't mccreesh beat mccready and that's what mccready said he said mccreesh ran six racks on him the last time <laughs> Well, that levels the scoreline one apiece now in the race to 11. Where can you find videos of the best players in the world? In their entirety and without commercials. AccuStats.com How about 8-ball, 9-ball, straight pool, 1-pocket, and 3-cushion billiards? AccuStats.com Only one place has it all. Check out our complete catalog on the net, 24 hours a day. Where do you ask? AccuStats.com Trust me, because he really has had very, very legitimate opportunities at the table for him to get the stroke. McCready, on the other hand, has. So uh, we still look for McCready to play very well, and, he's, and the balls are cooperating up at the time. Well, all three ones in the bank now for Keith McCready. Four in the books, and he's got a two-rack cushion. Keith McCready will be breaking off in rack number five. No extra choice. He cleared the table in that last rack, looking very comfortable, playing at a speed that very few can match. And that in itself can be very intimidating. So here we go, rack five. We got a ball down. And keep in mind the pressures are continuing to mount on the fish because he's falling further and further behind. And you know what? It's not his fault. Well, another situation that just a couple good positional shots, assuming that he gets the ball. Excellent shot, Jim. Notice the position of the two. He had to go two cushions and hit the ball very clean to attain the shot on the field that he did. There's certainly not many empty seats there on center stage either, Bill. It's no, day no. one here in Chesapeake, and the fans support this event like no other I've seen anywhere on the planet. Well, this is crucial here, Jim. He would like to end up right here on the three because he wants to end up here on the four considering the five is here he wants to go off the four one cushion down this way looked like you could have drawn a happy face there now he's on the correct side of the three to be on because he would like to end up once again he would like to end up anywhere around here for the four right now there's only one player smiling and it's not the player in his chair now this is the key shot in the rack going from the four to the, per, to, the orange, to the orange five at the other end of the table. And he has to hit it to speed to get off that second cushion. 
Okay, now he's found himself a little awkward on the uh, on the five, Jim. He may have a problem controlling the cue ball to play position for the six in the lower corner. Evidently not. He hit it perfectly, and it was a lot easier than I thought. Yes, sir. Angle, camera angle, sometimes can be a little deceptive, even to our folks at home uh -oh. watching. But uh -oh. He certainly doesn't want to be straight on this. Oh, well, he's going to end up straight and maybe behind the point of the corner pocket, not allowing him to even see the seven ball. You know, Billy, we watched him in practice, and he put a ball over the pocket and drew it full length and half again back up. He is cueing the ball as well as I've seen him in a long time, and there he overdrew that by a good foot. This is a, oh, what a hit. I mean, what a hit. You have no idea how difficult it was for him to do what he did. And Ryan McCreesh knows. He's the man suffering right now. Well, I, I, I can imagine. If he pockets the nine here, Jim, what an out. Oh, my, what an out. This is the second nine he's missed in this match. But I tell you what, the balls that preceded that shot, he certainly played extremely well. Unfortunately, you only you only get you only get the, uh, the count to score on the nine. That's the only ball that counts. So Ryan McCreesh steps out of his chair to deposit the nine. Thankfully, pulls one back. It's three two. McCready over McCreesh here. He escaped unscathed the first time he missed a nine. That time, not so lucky. No. And, you know, I think that was kind of like justice because McCreech has really been getting the short end of this up to that point. Now, if McCreech breaks the ball, pockets the ball, and the break comes up with the shot, he has a chance to get into that rhythm. He enjoys playing it. And nine ball, the nature of this game, you can string a few racks together, keep your opponent in his chair, take him out a stroke. Yeah, Mike Sigal said, nine ball is the game of momentum. It always changes. It's up to you to sustain that momentum if given the opportunity. And that is an ideal break for McCreesh. He's landed nicely on the one, the two at the same area of the table as the one. And that's what I was referring to, Jim. Now McCreesh has an opportunity to sustain the momentum if he pockets a ball on the break and comes up with a shot, which he's done. Well, that wasn't his best effort. Position to the two. He's got to play safe now. Excellent shot. Notice the position of the cue ball. Right in between the four and the seven. He should have walked away with a better with a better lead than this. And I thought perhaps he may have hooked him. Had he hit the or brushed the pink, the cue ball would have been behind the six and the seven. That was an excellent hit. He was unfortunate for the two to hit that corner. Still leaving the crease snooker though, but a much easier escape than had that two been further away. Exactly. Watch for the scratch here. He could scratch from the shot somewhere. Billy, you're a prophet. Who do you like in the seventh race at Aqueduct tomorrow? <laughs> I really never had much luck with the horses. Well, you heard the applause early. Right in line, they knew that McCready had fluked that two ball. Not only did he luck the two in, notice position of the three, the four. Everything is open, and considering how he landed on the three, opens the door for the rest of the rack. Oh, excuse me, that's the uh, seven. I apologize. The four was the next ball. Oh, he just bumped that five. Didn't want to be quite so close to his work. Looks like he can drop down to the side cushion here, Jim, for a position for the six in the side. Play that with a little bit of right-hand spin on that cue ball. To straighten it out, play that six into the side pocket. And in fairness, Billy, the hard work has been done in this one. The fluke two, pivotal. Exactly. He needs to stop anywhere in this area here for the, for the eight. He doesn't want to get too straight on the eight, Jim. He had a natural angle had he stopped where the X was. When he's gotten down the table a little bit further, and now he has to do something a little extra with the cue ball. And any time you do something extra with the cue ball, bad things can happen. That is a mistake that, again, Keith McCready will be taken back to his chair. And Ryan McCreesh comes up, pocketing the simplest of nines for two in a row. And, more importantly, squaring things up here in the U.S. Open. It's now three racks apiece. Yeah, this, this match could have been all McCready had he been a little more careful on, on a couple of nines and also on his position. 
on the later ball. At that time, the eighth. McCreech would have been in his chair wondering when he was going to get a legitimate opportunity. Hey, want to play some pool in the most exciting pool league in America? Then join the BCA Pool League today. You can play eight ball or nine ball in singles, doubles, and team competition. You can even play in the world's largest amateur pool tournament held every year in May in Las Vegas. To find a BCA Pool League in your area, visit the BCA Pool League website at playbca.com or call toll-free 866-USA-POOL. Meet Johnny Archer, the best pool player in the world. Johnny shoots with a scorpion cue. This guy doesn't. If he had a scorpion cue, he could count on protection against warping and dings, maple core technology to increase feel, a premium leather tip to eliminate miscues, and state-of-the-art engineering for a balanced stroke. Now you can play like a pro, too. Scorpion Cues, the choice of champions. He won't miss this guy. Uh, he's uh, letting the crowd know he's happy with that effort. Nine deposited back on square pegging here. 4-4. Four, four. Nothing in it between these two, but at least McCready has assured himself of the break in rack nine. Yeah, uh, McCready definitely, definitely needed that opportunity and uh, made, made well with it. He's a fan favorite everywhere he goes simply because of his natural flair for the game. He's obviously very wanting to have a chit-chat with the fans as he plays, whether the match is serious or not. So he's a very likable, very likable man. Very yes, easy he, to like. Yes, he is. He's a very entertaining player. Always picks up the support of the crowd. The, uh, they all seem to like the very charismatic McCree. And uh, once again, nothing on the break. Oh, he, did, he did pocket the ball with a break. He did. Yeah, but he's got a problem area. It looks like the three and the seven. The left-hand side of our picture could pose problems, but the good news for McCready or McCreesh, whichever one gets the look at it, is the close proximity of the two. They could even dislodge them. Yeah, I kind of like two cushions with the cue ball sitting around in this fashion here. Well, how, pocket it to one. How about that? He opened up the problem right away, but he hasn't landed perfectly on the two. A very fine cut if he elects to take this one into the side pocket. Very difficult sh shot in the side. I look in, he's looking to bank it and draw the cue ball back. Two-way shot. The two's in, but he's not on the three. I've got a feeling he didn't want that one, Billy. Well, not after he saw where the cue ball positioned himself behind the seven. Naturally, he would have liked the two not to have fallen, but uh, that wasn't the, case, wasn't the case. But he's got a pretty easy safety here, Jim. And just go behind the orange five very softly. Ryan just lost the last rack. Four, three behind. He really wants to try and assert himself here. A lot of crazy things can happen on this shot, Jim. A lot of balls there for, for crazy to happen. Notice. Oh, he almost scratched in the corner pocket. You know that? Yeah. Now what happened? From my vantage point, Jim, I'm not sure if he can pocket the three. No, absolutely not. And if McCready's reaction is any indication, I don't think he can. Now we can look at his body language to find out, in fact, if he does have a shot. He can he has. even strike the three? Never mind pocket it. Well, I do believe he can hit it. I don't know if he can pocket it, though. He's jacked up. Nope, nope. He, uh, he couldn't even hit it. Well, it's 4-4, four, four, Jim, and once again, McCready does have an opportunity at the table, and a good one. And this time, with the pocketing of the uh, remaining balls on the table, he'll have taken the lead for the first time in the match. Keith, uh, doubtfully, will be heading to the lottery machine after that effort. That was very unlucky. That cue ball could easily have dropped in and left McCready cue ball in hand. As it is, it's McCreesh at the table, and he'll be putting pay to this rack. A nice angle on the seven to take the cue ball up table to the eight. Yeah, it was crucial for him to attain the angle that he did, considering the position of the of the eight. 
But he's gotten pretty close to the cushion, Jim. And uh, once again, you know, uh, when you position the cue ball on or near a cushion, it could present problems. He's a quick pace player as well. Nine down, four for the score. The mistakes have come more from McCready, but that one, certainly Lady Luck playing a card and helping out Ryan McCreesh. So rack nine, and McCreesh will be breaking off as McCready sets the Sardo rack in motion. That Sardo rack has really revolutionized the game, hasn't it, Billy? It certainly has. It's more or less leveled the playing field, if you will. And what I mean by that is every time the balls are pushed up, they're very tightly racked, and everyone has about the same action on the break. There isn't any mistakes pushing up the balls, giving someone a, a, a bad rack, if you will. Not very that's intentional, but at times, you know, accidentally you, you get a bad rack. But the Sardo rack prevents that from happening. Yes, the score line actually 5-4 in favor of McCreesh right now. I think I may have mentioned 4-4, four, four, but it's McCreesh. It's actually just got his nose in front. Nicely executed shot. He had a mass say that ball. And he does have an opportunity to, pop, to hit the two. I don't know if he can hit. I don't know if he can cut it in. I don't know if he can see that side of the ball. And if he can, that shot doesn't play that simple either. It's, it's very difficult at times to pull the trigger on that type of attack because if you don't execute it well, you sell out. Now he could scratch here too, Jim. You know, it's a big pocket down there. You have to be careful. Okay. And it's very, very important for him to have hit that ball on the right side of the two, which he wasn't able to do. With ball in hand here, how important is it for Keith McCready to clear up and get the break, the break back in his corner. Nicely executed shot in terms of the speed of the cue ball. Notice how nicely he repositioned the cue ball. Perfect line for the Reds region. If the five passes the nine, that'll help immensely. The six can only be pocketed past the nine in the lower left-hand corner. So therefore, he has to come up with a shot on the five to attain that angle on the six if he expects to run out. Well, he's opting to bank the six cross side. Evidently, he didn't have the angle on the five to drop nicely for the six. And once again, nicely executed shot, but uh, this isn't a gimme either. It looks like it's, it's a little awkward. He's going to have to hit this well. Mm, falling a little short. He would have liked to come down the table another six to ten inches. But nevertheless, he's doing his job. I wiggled it in. The long nine, and ten racks are in the books here, five apiece, McCreesh and McCree. Their names are similar, the games are similar, and very little to choose between these two right now. Q-Tech state-of-the-art power-bonded cues have won more WPA-sanctioned world championships than any other brand of cue. Discover why world champion superstars like Allison Fisher and Earl Strickland play exclusively with Q-Tech cues. Only Q-Tech power bonds fiberglass and graphite to a solid hardwood core to decrease deflection, add power, and prevent warping. And Q-Tech offers you patented improvements like 20-inch Pro Taper SST shafts and True Glide finish. Improve your game with 21st century technology at prices you can afford. Q-Tech, imitated but never duplicated. Get the chalk off with the new and improved pool table cleaner. Just spray it out over the table and wipe it clean with the handy microfiber wiper and your pool table is cleaner than new. Get the chalk off with this professional pool table cleaner. You get free shipping when you call us toll free 866-774-8770 or visit us online at PoolTableCleaner.com. Get the chalk off today. A lot of good, good uh, points in the game, a lot of strengths, 
and he's taking advantage of him too. He's got a great break, a good shot method, and he looks like he's got a lot of heart and determination. He's keeping it simple, and he now leads 7-6 in the race to 11. And McCree shall be breaking off in rack number 14. But he mopped up there very nicely. Parked McCree in his chair. And he'll be looking to duplicate that effort if he gets his wish here in rack 14. But they're nearing the business end of this match. And the stakes are going to be magnified a little bit more and the pressure as well. Absolutely. The later in the match it gets, the more pressure comes into play. And that's what makes the difference, okay? Who handles the pressures the best? And that's what separates the men from the boys, Jim, you know? And, it, and it's not easy at times to handle the pressures. You see McCready with a big grin on his face right over Ryan McCready's back there. I think that might be a grin outward. Boy, he really strikes the balls with power. You know, I'm very impressed with his ability to open up the ball. I don't know whether Keith can see enough pocket to be able to try and slot this one home. Not only that, the position of the blue two is in a very curious position. Parked on top of the pink four, creating problems for him to attain a shot on the two, even if he does pocket the one. I wonder if he attacked there, Billy. Yeah, he sure tried to pocket the one. I know it's positioned in the cue ball. Had he pocketed the one, I don't even know if he would have come up with a shot on the two. But he hasn't left McCreese a very easy opportunity either. So, therefore, McCreese has a lot of work in front of him and starts off on the one ball. Now he's looking to see if he pockets the one where the cue ball is going to go. Should it go toward the nine, perhaps even... He may even get a little lucky here in pocketing the nine. There it goes. Oh, he pocketed the one. Excellent shot, Jim. I'm really impressed with his ability, with his ability to pocket balls. He's a great shot, Tanker. He fundamentally looks very sound. He delivers that cue nicely through that cue ball. Oh, I kind of like this shot. I kind of like him shooting the two off the four. Cue ball on one, two cushions, three cushions, and down here eventually. That's the shot I like. Well, if he can pocket the two, forget about all that crazy stuff. But if he can't pocket the two, I kind of like that shot. Yeah, once again, if he can't pocket the two, I kind of like the cube. One, two, pushes, three, and then down here. So he played it. He played it a little bit differently. See, notice how the cue ball was going in that direction. Now, if he hit, would have hit a hard, he went down to the bottom cushion, left a lot of distance and possibly no shot off on the two. Looks like he left him a little window here. And if he did, he doesn't figure to step back to the table with a good shot. Well, it looks like McCree's going to get a little, little lucky here. Possibly. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. But right away, notice the position of the three. Right here. The two right here. How does he get positioned for the three, Jim? That's going to be the storyline in this rack. That positional shot will hold the key to victory or failure. Exactly. So his only active viable route would be somewhere in this area here. And he's fallen short of the mark. But he still has left himself with a fairly easy safety. A nicely executed shot. Leaving McCready nothing to hit directly, but he has to kick. And he looks like he can kick and get some good results with this shot. It looks like if he kicks off his cushion, Jim, into the three ball, the three ball will then depart this way, the cue ball will then depart this way. He has to be careful he doesn't scratch here. But, of course, uh, you know, he doesn't have much offered to him. To play that shot, Billy, I think he'd be massaying around the six. So you'll see him raise the back end of his cue as McCreesh looks on. And that's exactly what he has to do, Jim. 
Look, he may even pocket the red three here. Nope. But he's found the position behind the nine with the cue ball, making this particular uh, opportunity quite difficult for, for McCreesh. Even if he pockets the three ball with his mass A, the pink four ball position at the other end of the table making it very difficult to come up with a shot on the four. A lot of work. He's opted to get with his go to his jump cue here. I kind of like it and don't like it. I like it because he has the ability to pocket his three and reposition the cue ball for the four. But I don't like it because if he ju jumps over the line, he may jump off the table. So therefore, this, this shot carries good things and bad things. Well, he hit the three ball too square to, to attain any type of a shot on the four. Chance here to try and drop that cue ball in behind some cover. In the snooker, form of the five or the six. A snooker player's shot, huh, Jim? Repositioning the cue ball behind the five and the six would be ideal. And right away... My friend here to my right noticed that shot was available. He struck it perfectly. Not that time. Cue ball in hand for McCreesh, and that should spell the end of rack number 14. And for Ryan McCreesh, a glorious opportunity for him to enjoy his first two-rack lead of this match. But he can't afford to get careless there, Jim. Going from the five to the six could present somewhat of a problem if he doesn't end up pretty good on the five. He doesn't figure to have a problem, but he could. See, he's being, being very careful. Notice how he's looking at the five. That's the key shot. He knows where the key shots are, but he has to make sure that he gets the right angle off the five to drop nicely for the six. He stayed on the correct side of the five. Now all he needs to do is pocket the five bring the cue ball back about six to eight inches he's going to have a nice shot on the six and he's going to have the ability to cut the six in and go cross table for position on the seven well, i, I kind of like him drawing this shot opposed to going two cushions i kind of like drawing it over here and out here if he's going two cushions, he's going to get it further away from the seven. Had he drawn the ball, he would have been closer. But that, I, you can't really argue with that. That's pretty good. That's, as a matter of fact, that's real good. We said at the outset, this was a very difficult opening match for both players. And it has proven just that. And I thought it was going to be more difficult for McCreese because he was in, more the in, inexperienced player. But uh, that's not looking like it's, 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 it's true. Uh, it looks like McCreese is handling the pressures quite well. And once again, nicely struck ball. Choice of pockets, side pocket or corner. Just a matter of personal preference. Side it is, and Ryan McCreese with a flick of the cue knows he's just got himself two racks clear. Eight six. He wants three more to survive this first round clash against the McCreese. Ever wonder how the pros make it look so easy? We practice a lot. And we know the basic concepts of shot making. Now you can too when you use the spider. The spider teaches you where the balls need to make contact in order to make the shot. It's easy because it uses laser guided technology. And when you practice with the spider, you can learn to see what the pros see. Call toll free or go online and order yours today. This championship is played with the Super Aramith Pro Cup set, the professional ball set that guarantees ultimate precision in your game. 
And now this top quality set with its through hardened surface, its beautifully engraved numbers, and its new red dotted Pro Cup cue ball comes in a unique value pack, including also the Aramis ball cleaner, the microfiber cleaning cloth, and the Jimmy Rempe training cue ball with its manual. The Super Aramis Pro Cup set, a value pack built for the player who loves the game. The Sardo Rack M3000 is the most consistent and efficient tool for the game of pool. You get a perfect rack every time, which allows you to take your game to the next level. Call 866-774-8770 or visit sardorack.com to order yours today. If you're not using the Sardo Tight Rack, you're not playing pool. The Sardo Tight Rack. Precision. Manifested. But not that time. He couldn't afford to miss it that time. 870 pulls one back and a sigh of relief with it. And McCready will be breaking in rack number 16 of a possible 21. And McCready's shaking his head as he racks the balls too, Billy. He knows that he had this one in his grasp. After the break and the way the balls were sitting up nicely for him, it was only going to be a mistake from within. Yes, but then they would have lessened the suspense in this match, but that's not what happened. A lot of suspense left in this match. Eight to seven, McCready breaking. Give me a ball one time. He's not going to get one. He's not going to get one. And it looks like the McCready can uh, stretch over the table and quite possibly be able to cut to one in, Jim. Mm -mm, not that time. And the cue ball is going to come around the table, I think, maybe far enough for him to have some type of action on the one, maybe real first. With a slight mass say, he can go real first there, Jimmy. He can't hit this too hard, though. The two balls position very nicely. Looks like he struck it nice. So vital, though, in this game, Billy, if you're going to... If you're going to dominate, you've got to have a big break. And if McCready does have an Achilles heel, it really has to be in the form of his break. Exactly. And that's a very valid, valid point you brought up there. And he's been able to defeat the best players in the world consistently with his inferior break, if you will. That's just how good of a shot maker he is. Watch out. Watch out. Now, that's carelessness. That's pure carelessness. Notice seven blocks the pocket for the four. Had he come up with a shot on the four, he, f he has fallen, I think, too short. Yeah, well, evidently not. This is the key shot here, Jim. Can he attain a shot on the five? Just has to clear that six, draw this back towards the middle of the table. I kind of play it, sorry, Billy, or I was going to say play it to the bottom side as we look here. Just his choice. Yeah, I kind of like for him to go up this way here. And I think he's gotten down the table far enough to come up with a shot on the five. And if that's the case, which it looks like it is, this the rack should play really routinely on the remainder of the rack. It's been a roller coaster ride. Both of these players have had glimpses of looking like they could run away and hide. It just hasn't materialized as yet. That's certainly not the case, Jim. This, this match is up for grabs. Keith McCready, if and when he deposits this nine, will be back into the role of favorite in this match. And it does. Down an 8-8 the score line confirmed, but it's going to be McCready to break in rack 17. And yeah. he's got to sort out a successful equation for that break. Yeah, you mentioned that his break is, is probably going to cost him a lot of matches, and it doesn't seem to be nearly as effective or productive as McCreese's break, and I totally agree with that. So once again, we're going to find out how well he does off the break, and he hasn't really done that well in the past. It looks like the pink four may go, but it didn't. How about the orange five? Yes, it does. He will that one into the pocket. I don't know whether he's got a shot at the one here, Billy, but certainly he can maintain the initiative, play a good attacking safety. 
Oh, I think he went for the one. That one had oh, that side pocket available, and that's, clear. A, that's a huge mistake. Clearly went for the one. So he can pocket the one, but what's going to happen with the cue ball? Is he going to brush the nine, not allowing him to come up with a shot? If he does, I don't know. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Got away from the nine. Nicely struck ball, Jim. 8-8. Eight, eight. There's a lot of pressures out there right now. Every opportunity either one of these players get, they have to make good with. Now he's looking at the three past the eight in the upper right-hand corner. Does he have enough, enough room to pocket it? He thinks so. I don't know. Is he going toward the other side of the table for the... Look, he's looking at the upper right-hand corner, and he's got an off angle on this shot. This is a very difficult shot. Oh, what a beautifully executed shot that one. And he couldn't have picked a better time to pull that rabbit out of a hat. He's a very gutsy player, Jim. He's just got that look about him, Billy. And when the going gets tough, he is capable of digging in and producing some of his best. Shoots pure to the pocket. Center pocket, center pocket, center pocket. Very difficult player to beat. So many of these players play on some of the minor tours around the states. But you know, they're no strangers when it comes to match experience. He got a little lazy there, Jim. Got a little lazy. Now he has op an option. He can play the shot two ways. You go one cushion over here, or you go two cushions over here. That was natural and much easier than I thought. The missed one proving costly for McCready. And he's back out of his chair to rack the balls for McCreesh. 9-8. Ryan McCreesh in front. Are you looking for the ultimate one-stop shop for pool and billiard supplies? Then you need to visit billiardclub.net today for everything and anything you need for your home entertainment center. Our huge online store features pool cues, balls, racks, Cue cases, pool table lights, training aids, and every accessory you could possibly imagine. We've got the best prices and the highest quality product you'll find anywhere. Log on today to billiardclub.net or call toll free 866-774-8770. Billiardclub.net. Very difficult shot. Wow, look at this shot. Oh my goodness, what a shot, Jim. What a shot. Oh wow, and he needed it so badly. He needs one more. Look at McCreesh. Mm -hmm. This shot carries a lot of pressure with it, Jim. He's got to shoot off the cushion and soft, softly roll it. Oh my. Looks like he's going to get fortunate here. Well, who would begrudge him getting a little lucky? I don't know whether it's happened. I think he can get through to this. If he could hit the outside of the pink ball, the, the, the billiard seems to be right there. That poor ball never threatened the corner pocket, Billy. Just no. a lot of body movement in McCready's cue action there. Yeah, he's going to be okay, McCready. You know, McCready really definitely had an opportunity there. I don't know what he had in mind, Jim. I mean, from, the, from how he hit that ball, I don't know what he had in mind. And it's a crucial time of the match. Cheating the pocket on that one. And he needed to cheat the pocket on that particular shot, Jim, to get the speed that he needed to get off the cue ball. Had he hit that ball a little, a little fuller, he would have never gotten down the table far enough for a shot this easy on the six. Nicely executed shot. 
a beautiful thing when you can miss a one like Ryan McCreesh did and still get back to the table and win the rack helps to erase the memories of that bad miss. Yeah, exactly. Particularly when it gets when it's so late in the match, it feels so much better. Nine down, and McCreesh finds himself on the hill. 10-8. He wants one more rack to move into the A side second round. It's going to be a long, long road for McCready if he goes on and loses this match. It's the first match of the tournament for both of these players. And it's not often. I don't even remember when the last time the pair lost the first match and went on to win a major event. It's a very, very difficult thing to do. Once again, McCreesh inspecting the rack making sure all balls are frozen before he strikes the break. Well, that's been the difference in this match for me. McCreesh's success rate on his break compared to McCready's. That's an excellent point, Jim. This match, this match was won by the, by the power of, of McCready's break. And also, I'm not going to sell him short, you know, pretty good execution as well. So the finish line appears. And I do believe he's going to close McCready out. He's not going to allow himself to get careless in this rack because, you know, he has the skills, obviously, to do what he's been doing. And if he gets a little bit careless, that'll stop him. But I'm not, I don't think he's going to get careless in this rack. This is for the dough. This is for the cheese. This is for the match. And he wants to make sure he closes him out. But McCready is capable of coming from behind, as he's done so many times. McCready can close the door on him here. And he doesn't have to do a lot with the cue ball. Just follow through slightly. Leave himself a nice angle on that four to drop onto the orange five next. Nothing short of a huge mistake is going to allow McCready back to the table in this match. I don't know why he went down the table that far for the five. I would have stayed a lot further from the five. Not running the risk of going behind the nine. Well, I'll lay you a small bet that McCreesh <laughs> held his breath watching that cue ball inch toward that nine. That was almost disaster. Now he's flat on the five. He's going to have to do a little more work with the cue ball to attain a shot on the seven. Nicely executed shot. He's gotten himself back in line again. Two cushions out of the upper left-hand corner with the cue ball. Should send them in an ideal position for the black eight. One cushion, two cushions, nice speed of the cue ball. This match is history. Yeah, I just saw a nod of the head. I think Keith McCready has accepted defeat in this one. And the simple nine to punctuate a great performance from Ryan McCreesh. Down it goes, and a fist. The exclamation point. Ryan McCreesh, an 11 8 winner. In day one action here over Keith McCready, he goes through. McCready's going to have to fight his way back on the B-side, Billy, and that will be a tall order for him. Yes, it is, but on in behalf of McCready, I mean, uh, uh, you can't help but like what you saw in McCready, you know. He has a lot of skills. He has got a big break. He's got a lot of heart. You know, if he's weak in any part of his game, I think it's his choice of shots, his pattern play. But other than that, you know, I was really impressed with the way he played. Absolutely. The break proved to be the difference. So all done here. Keith McCready, a 11-8 loser to Maryland's Ryan McCreesh. The U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship on Billiard Club Television has been brought to you by Scorpion Cube, Chalk Off, and the DCA Pool League. This has been a production of Billiard Club Network in association with Acrostat Video Productions. For more, log on to BillionClub.net. Well, for my partner, Billy and Cardona, I'm Jim White, and you've been watching the 2004 U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship from Chesapeake, Virginia. So long, everybody.